A few months back, in association with our travel partner, Travel and Go led by Rakesh, we decided that we will take all our friends to Goa for a trip and make it a memorable experience because we have not been there together. Although we both have been there plenty of times, uh, this was a first experience for all of them. So we wanted to make it very, very special. Unfortunately, Rakesh couldn't join us because he broke his leg right at the time of the trip. And hence, we were all very sad that he couldn't join us. So the journey started off on a very sad note and we were not really excited that much. The next day in the morning, we were greeted with the sun rays that graze the rivers and lakes and beautiful scenery that the train took us through. That cheered up everyone. And I knew it, that Goa has a way of changing things around in ways that we cannot even imagine. We got down at Mudgao station and from there, we rented two cars because we were a group of 12. Jubin and Rashkar took one car and they went to pick Jubin's sister from the airport. And I took the others and we went to our place of stay in Baga. On the way to the airport, Ashkar and team, they stopped at this place called the Three Kings Chapel. It was supposed to be a haunted place. This was in Kansolim and the urban legend says that there were three kings who fought each other and they killed each other in the quest to become more powerful and the ultimate ruler. And all of them were buried in that chapel itself and now they are haunting the people that visit the place apparently. Can't say if the chapel was really haunted or not, but the people who went there they did not come back the same. They were completely lost for the entirety of the trip. More on that later. After picking everyone up, we regrouped at the hotel that we are staying and we decided to go for some shopping, some food and to enjoy some music. Well, the best place to do that in Baga was Brito's and the shopping lanes nearby. After we came back to our rooms and then we decided we'll have a little bit of jamming session, music, games and enjoy the first night in Goa. In this moment we were all singing Puttu Bhattu by Tagara because that was Rakesh's favorite song. And we were all missing him at that point and Jivan is clearly taking a video to send to Rakesh. The next day morning, we had planned to take everyone to Chapora Fort to experience its beauty in the morning before the crowd comes in. But as fate would have it, after all that partying in the 
previous night none of us woke up and we couldn't go so we all woke up by around noon and then we went to this hotel nearby to have some lunch sitting there seeing everyone in their own space laughing and joking about i knew it then that this is this is how you make memories After lunch, I thought I'll take everyone to Chapura Fort because that's one of the attractions that one should not miss on their first trip to Goa. So I pushed our actual plan for the day for later in the evening and we all went to Chapura. Hame har saal kam se kam ek hafte ke liye Goa aana chahiye. I'm not sure how many remember which movie this is from. This is from one of my personal favorites Dil Chahta Hai. And how relevant has it been? And that movie changed the landscape of this place forever. and so much that this place is now called as the Dilchata Hai Fort On our way back I was thinking for the first time that I came to this place There were no shops here no steps nothing it was just a barren hill and we had to climb all the way up to the top but now there are steps all the way up to the top and there are little, little shops nearby where you can get clothes and juices or water which will help you on the way to the top i saw the flashes in the dark colors on the wall from chapora we went to anchi as we walked up to the beach the view that was waiting for us was nothing short of magical as the sun set hues the horizon with orange crimson the paragliding the ships it's a sight that's magical to the eyes while the team decided to stay at the beach and take a dip in the ocean i trekked further and got up on the hill to one of my favorite spots in goa to watch the sunset so in silence i sat there and the sun went down It's a new dawn, it's a new day, and we had to check out from our hotel and leave for South Goa. But I had one final place to take them around in North Goa, and that was the Devil's Finger Cave. There are two ways that you can get to the spot. One entrance is near the Sinkwarim Fort and the other entrance is through a land area near Agwada Fort. Both needs a little bit of uh, trek so be prepared with bottles of water and be prepared to walk. Well half our team was missing because they were not interested to walk. The rest of us we love trekking so we got up in the morning and we went to check out this place. came here in the month of february so all the grasslands had been cut or burnt down that's the reason why it's looking all goldish 
If you come here during monsoons or right after monsoons, this place will be covered in green green grasslands. And that's a sight to watch as well. After trekking for about 20 to 30 minutes for about 3 to 4 kilometers, we reach the cave. If you are visiting this place during monsoons or right after monsoons, this area could be very dangerous because it's gonna be really slippery. So be careful. When we reached there, one question that everyone had in mind was why was this cave called as a devil's finger cave? What was so special about it? So there are different different stories about why the name came in but the most logical one that I found was that there is a fungus called the devil's finger which gives a reddish tint to the rocks and the plants in that cave and it's found only in this cave specifically. Do you guys ever feel like when you sit somewhere in nature that this place has not seen a human touch in thousands of years? Well, I felt like I traveled back in time because this place and the seashore nearby has not changed in a long time. And you can actually see the remains of the fort, the Aguada fort, the Sinkorin fort. And if you stand there long enough, you can probably see the Portuguese ships sailing there. But this is all just my imagination. I'm not even sure anyone else felt it. But the one thing that I need to tell you is Wherever you go, don't look at the place. Uh, keep it clean. We came with 11 water bottles and we took all of them after our trek. It's pretty tiring but then we did it. After spending about 20 to 30 minutes by the cave, we decided it was time to go. Remember what I told you about the people who went to the Three Kings Chapel and that they were lost for the entirety of the trip? Boys, what about girls? Girls also. Well, one of the incidents was here. Jibin took most of the team and he left. And I stayed back with Ashkar because we had to fill in some B-rolls for the blog. On getting back, we found that nobody had reached the place where we started. So we had to go around and start looking for them. And we found them. <laughs> <laughs> Jibin had apparently led them to another end of the hill and we had to do a very risky climb to get to the place where we started trekking. On the way to South Goa, we decided to make a little detour and visit the Basilica of Bomb Jesus. ഒരുമരത്തിൽ <laughs> 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 For the evening, Jibin had planned to take everyone to Delton Royal, which is a floating casino in Panaji. 
As this was our last night in Goa, we wanted to do something really special and this was it. After an entire night in the casino, we could not get up in the morning the next day. So we stayed in bed until noon and we got out in the afternoon for some food. Our cottage in South Goa was right next to the Korwa beach. So we had nothing planned and nothing to do. So all we thought was just go to the beach, have some nice seafood and just chill, nothing else. Since this was my first time in Kola Beach, I didn't know what to expect here. This part of the plan was Rakesh's idea. To our surprise, we found this amazing shack on the beach, which had amazing food, good music, and just a very chill, very relaxing vibes to it, which was exactly what we all wanted. And we literally had the entire shack for ourselves. So we would just eat the food, get into the sea, have a swim, come back, have a couple of drinks, go back. I mean, what more can one ask for? And by the end of it, we were thinking, why didn't we come here in the first place? The vibe, the ocean, it was just magic. After watching the sun go down, it was time for us to go and leave Goa until next time. By the end of it, all of us were feeling like Hrithik Roshan from Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. The holidays are over and we have to get back to our lives from tomorrow. This trip is one thing that we will always remember and we will always hold close. For the memories that we created, for the people that we met and the experiences that we shared. Until next time, this is Justin signing off. We sell our love to see the sky.